Welcome back to this uh, lecture series on PowerShell with me, Joachim Sherestot from the University of Hovde. Uh, in this quite short video demonstration we're going to look at some variables, arrays and hash tables within PowerShell. Uh, and we're just going to look at how to add them and how to work with them real simple. So, so one thing that is quite nice with PowerShell is that whenever you declare a variable, what you have to do is basically that you take dollar a variable name, like dollar $var, equals and then you type whatever you want it to be so if you want it to be a string you input a string value if you want it to be uh, an integer you input a number and so on and so forth if you want it to be an array you input a list of variables so uh, or a list of values so whatever you want to do you can just declare a variable with dollar the variable name and then add whatever you want to do and depending on how you manage your variable it will uh, be an array or it will be a integer or it will be a hash, ta hash table. So looking at the easiest way to just uh, declare a variable, so we're going to go dollar $var, uh, hello world, and then we're going to echo dollar $var, which we can do by just typing it, and we're just going to print output this to, see it, to show that it works, and what happens then is that it program outputs hello world. So this is a very easy way to, to work with variables. So looking at different variable types, what is some of the more useful are uh, bool, which is a, a binary variable, if you will, that can either hold true or false as a value, very useful for, as a control variable for, uh, for loops and things like that. Then we have strings that just hold a, a string value, which is some arbitrary text integer which is a, a number and array which is a, a list of different values and then finally we have a hash table but let's save that for now so if we look at declaring variables I said that you don't need to declare the data type but if you want to you can do a, uh, do that and, and then you put a data type within brackets like bool a bool equals true this will hard code this as a boolean variable same with string this will be a string whatever happens this will be an integer whatever happens and this will be an array whatever happens so the basic syntax for the single data variable type where you only have one one value into the variable is that you just type dollar your variable name like dollar bool equals whatever you want it to be in this case true or dollar string equals whatever whatever you want to be have in the string uh, however if you want to declare an an array, what you have to do is that you do type the variable name and then an at and then a comma separated list of what you want. So uh, I'm just going to run this code. So I'm going to declare bool string and in int to true string in 13 and then I'm going to declare array and into the array I will put the bool, the string and the int, right? So let's do that. So now I have my variables and I have my array and just to show you that I declared all of those things I'm going to mark uh, the print statement or where I just typed array here and I'm going to run selection and to see to show you that uh, within my array I now have true string and 13 just as I declared. So now there is a few other nice things that you can need to know about arrays first thing is that if you want to address a single element of the array so let's say that we want to print element number one which is the second value in the array uh, then I do that with dollar array and then I put the index number within brackets and remember that the first element in the array is index number zero so the second ar element in the array will be index number one like in this case so if I just print that I should get string and that's what I'm getting uh, another nice thing about arrays is that, or about different variables, is that you can type the variable name and then you can add an operation to it with a dot. So for instance, count is an operation that we can do to an array. So if I type array.count, what's going to happen is then we're going to get the number of elements that are present in the array. So if I do $array.count, the return value should be 3, as you can see here, down here in the output. Um, also, if I want to add an element to the end of an array, then I can write the array name and then I go plus equals two, and then the value of the new element that I want to add. So if I go dollar array plus equals last, then that should mean that I'm adding a string with a value last to the end of my array. And if I print the array, you can see that it happened. So now I also have last here at the very end of my array. Uh, so that's basically what I wanted to show you for the basic data types, but remember from Perl that we have the very nice data type that is called a hash table. Uh, and if 
uh, just to recap, a hash value is a, uh, a collection of key value pairs. So a hash table basically holds one uh, to, the, to the left, you can say that there is a number of keys that has to be unique and then to the right every key can have a value. So we declare a hash table if we want to hard code it with hash table within brackets and then the hash name, uh, like in this case dollar cars. And then in PowerShell we use an at and then curly brackets. And then we do key one equals to the equals value one, semicolon. And then for the second pair we do the value equals, uh, e or the key equals the value and then again the key equals the value. So in this case key one will hold the value value one, the key Kia will hold the value good, the, the key BMW will hold the value cool. So let's instantiate that and run. So uh, then if I want to print the hash as it is I can just go uh, uh, go type the hash name so dollar cars and I'm going to print it and you can see here very clearly that it's a table of key names BMW cool key one value one Kia good and uh, just as in Perl the hash table is an unordered list so that's nice to know the order doesn't really have anything with how you input in things the order will be arbitrary and take it as that so uh, now when we're working with hashes there is a bunch of operations that we can do so the first one is that we maybe want to remove something and the way we do that is that we take the hash name and then a dot and then remove and then we address a certain key name so if we want to address uh, or remove the first key value pa pair which is key one uh, we just go dollar cars dot remove and then key one so I'm going to show you there it should be removed and now if I do dollar cars again you can see that only BMW and and Kia is present here. If we want to add something, the syntax looks a little bit different than how we add some uh, add values from the start. We basically do dollar cars dot add, and then we first type the value, uh, or first we type the key, and then we type the value. So if I want to add the key Ford with a value American, I go uh, dollar cars dot add Ford American, just like so, and now we have a nice hash only containing cars. Uh, so if I want to change something, uh, change the value for a key, I can go set item. So I'm actually realizing that BMW isn't really what I like because I'm a Kia guy. Uh, so I want to change BMW uh, or the value for the key BMW to bad. Then I go dollar cars dot set item, and the key and the new value. So dollar cars set item BMW bad. That would change the value for BMW from cool too bad and if I run the little cars again you can see that it worked right, right down here. Uh, if I want to get the value for a certain for a certain key I can go to the cars dot get item. Uh, so in this case dollar cars dot get item key should return good and you can see that it does. Uh, I can also get all the keys that contains a certain value and I this I do with dollar cars dot contains value. So if I do dollar cars dot contains value good I should get Kia as a return, right? And that's... Oh, no, sorry. Uh, this is a check to see if a certain value is even present in the hash, so that's what I'm getting. So if I do $cars.containments value good, I will get true because the uh, one of the keys contains the value good. Uh, so uh, there is also the count function I can do just as for the arrays and it will, uh, it will return the number of uh, key value pairs that are in the hash, which is in this case is three because we have BMW, Kia, and Ford. Uh, and the final thing, next thing I want to show you is uh, the get type operation, which is really nice because sometimes uh, a drawback of this weak typing where you can just do uh, we can just do as we did in the beginning and go yeah you see like here dollar variable equals the value and then you and then you expect for PowerShell to figure out the variable type on, our, on his own the negative thing with that is that the variable type isn't always what you expect so even if you input a number if you do it in a cer certain way like take it from from the prompt or whatever it may be it can be uh, a string or it can be something that you don't really expect so sometimes it's good to use the get type operation uh, so uh, just to figure out the variable type. So as an attempt here, if I just go dollar string and dot get type, I should get string as a return. And you can see here that the name of it, um, you, 
can see here that I get some information about it, which is that it is, is public, uh, it's a system object, and so on and so forth. I can do the same with integer. Uh, what I get here is that it's an int32, and what is a little bit weird here is that you would like it to say type instead of name, but uh, what's in the name column here is actually the data type for the variable. So if I go dollar $cars, it should be re reveal that it's a hash table, and it does. Uh, another thing that you might want to see is how you do if you want to uh, if you want to remove the data from a variable. Uh, and it's quite simple. You just have to set it to dollar null, and it will be annihilated. So if I set a variable here uh, and I set it to value, and I can just show you that if I just use variable part here it will contain value and then I want it to be nothing so I do dollar variable equals dollar null and now it should be annihilated so if I try to print dollar variable again I will yeah get nothing because it's null and null is sort of a constant for nothing so this was it for variables and uh, next time we're going to look at selections and loops uh, and uh, yeah stay tuned <laughs>